Live from the KFOX 14 studios in El Paso and Las Cruces, this is KFOX 14 News at 5. Flooding forces people from their homes in Socorro, one of the hardest hit areas in a rainstorm that's hit all of the borderland hard. And some residents say it's the worst flooding they've experienced. Their story in just two minutes. Good evening, I'm John Purvis. I'm Erica Castillo. The rain has calmed down for now, but we are still under a flood watch. Chief Meteorologist Sandra Diaz is in our KFOX 14 Severe Weather Center with your first look at the weather. She begins our severe weather team coverage. Oh, Erica and John, everybody knows it's been quite a day for many of us across the borderland. Um, if we can go straight to our Doppler, you can just see some of the local storm reports that have come in throughout the day. Earlier at 122 in Anthony, there was reports of the Arroyos already running full. And then a little, not too long ago, I should say, we had another report here on the west side of town, and that was with significant rainfall at about 4.1 inches of rain near Executive Drive in West El Paso. Another area also that was hit is, uh, that was the northeast side of town, 1.7 inches of heavy rain here in central El Paso near Merchinson. We have a lot of rain that has moved out of the area, but I'm concerned down to our south for the possibility of more showers in this area that are going to be drifting into our direction. Again, a lot of the rain has pushed off north and east of here, but as I mentioned, just south and west of us, we have some more storms that are slowly marching their way towards us. We do have our flood watch, as Erica mentioned, and th with that in effect and additional rain, flooding is certainly some of a concern for us. How much longer these showers will last is still ahead. Water overruns a canal on Coker Road near North Loop after flooding burst through an arroyo. KFOX 14 News at 5, Stacy Walsh is live in Socorro to show us how people are dealing with the damage. Cars are still filled with water this evening after flooding washed through this mobile home park on Coker Road. And people living here tell me their only option is to wait for the water level to slowly go down. Flood water nearly splashes up to the doors of these mobile homes, forcing people to wade through their own yards. But I got a car I got to dry out and other stuff over there. My cat went flying out and ended up getting stuck in a tree. That's how bad flood waters on Coker Road were this morning. It's a big mess. We can't get back there. It's pure sand, pure dirt. People are stranded there, and that's where we're hoping the National Guard can help us and reach those people. And I came back from dropping off my kids. Uh, the fire department is there, and, and they will not let me go in. It kept raining throughout the morning. And when it finally stopped, the water left this stable owner near Coker Road with tons of sand to clear out, horses to move, and even road damage. But my plan is for to, to start cleaning up and um, actually was removing all the sand. To, to go ahead and drive up here to the ranch. People living here tell me the water has only gone down a few inches in some areas, but it has gone down a lot near this canal because a few hours ago I was standing in water right here. And I have seen city crews out here in the last few hours working to clear mud off this road so people can access it. Reporting live in Socorro, Stacey Welsh, KFOX 14 News at 5. It is just a mess, and the city of Socorro turns the Rio Vista Community Center into a shelter after people evacuate their homes. Volunteers provided them with food and water. The city also used school buses to take people to the shelter, encouraging them to leave their homes in case flooding gets worse. Some people arrived at the shelter after flooding forced them to leave their mobile homes near Thunder Road. The dam from behind my trailer is coming down, and all of it already busted one of the trailers in the far back. Socorro's Mayor Jesus Ruiz says as many city staff members as possible are out helping control floodwaters and clear damage in neighborhoods. The city also opened a shelter in part of Socorro High School today to help people dealing with flooding. Residents in another Socorro neighborhood were jolted out of bed this morning by a loud crashing sound. The heavy rain caused a massive sinkhole to open up in their backyard. KFOX 14 News at 5's Bill Malugin gives us a look as we continue our severe weather team coverage. Here's what homeowners off of Reed Road near I-10 are dealing with. Runoff has literally created a river that's coming through this entire neighborhood and forming a waterfall and already two gigantic sinkholes have opened up. 
Dakota Gomez has lived in the neighborhood for eight years. She says her parents woke up at three this morning to the sounds of trees and sand falling. When they went outside, their trees, property, and an electrical pole had all been swallowed up by a large sinkhole. And an even larger one had opened up just yards away, turning what is normally a dirt lot into a waterfall. Homeowners immediately grabbed shovels to try and build a mud wall diversion for the water rushing into their neighborhoods. The city hadn't shown up yet, so the responsibility of protecting their property fell on their shoulders. I'm pretty afraid this is my parents' house behind us, and there's a big sinkhole back there. We're pretty afraid of losing everything we have. It's really bad. It's really flooded. I think they already destroyed one of, one of my mobile homes. The people, the tenants down there are stuck. They can't get out and in and out. Now, I spoke with Socorro Mayor Jesus Ruiz, who is understandably having a very busy day today, and he told me the city's resources are already spread completely thin as they're trying to help people, and he tells me he hopes the National Guard will be able to come in to provide some extra help as well. In Socorro, Bill Malugin, KFOX 14, News at 5. Parts of neighboring San Elizario also ended up underwater. The El Paso County Sheriff's Office set up a command center in the town to help residents deal with the heavy flooding there. So far, they report no injuries or accidents, but many homeowners struggled with the rising water surrounding their homes as it started to seep in. In 25 minutes, KFOX 14 News at 5, Genevieve Curtis talks to families impacted by the flooding. And while she was out there, KFOX 14 reporter Genevieve Curtis shot this video of some land in Clint looking like a lake. It looks like you could go fishing out there. That property, which is supposed to be dry land, is just off of North Loop. Our morning photojournalist, John Treffenstead, took this video at Saragossa and Saul Kleinfeld on El Paso's far east side at about 10.30 in the morning. You can see the amount of rain as that car cautiously drives through the flooded streets. A road washed out in the Horizon City Sparks area this morning. An arroyo that's usually dry turned into a rushing river, cutting the street in two. The flooding also damaged some homes in the area. But one resident tells KFOX 14, while this is bad, it's not as bad as the flooding of seven years ago. It was in 2006. Um, it was actually worse. This is not as bad as in 2006. Toda says residents now know not to try to cross this road when it floods because several years ago two people died when their car got washed away in this same spot. Here's a look at what the rainfall did in Chaparral. Uh, this area looks like a small river. Residents tried to keep the water from getting into their homes by sweeping it out of their yards. Heavy rains hit Interstate 10 again in the exact same spots that were flooded and closed down yesterday. KFOX 14 News at 5's Bill Malugin was on that story as well. Well, we're here in central El Paso right now, and right now I am standing on Gateway West. It is completely submerged underwater as these heavy rains move through the area. If you look down the street, police have already blocked off Copia Street, and if you look on I-10 right here, traffic has come to nearly a standstill. Police have blocked some of the exits off, and cars are having a hard time trying to get through here as this weather just keeps getting worse and worse. If you take a look down the street as well, that's Piedra Street down there. I believe that's closed off as well. I can see some police lights down there. And if I'm not mistaken, it looks like one of the cars right here, that white car in that intersection, may have actually stalled out in these storm waters. Uh, I don't know where the driver is, uh, but it looks like that car has stalled out. So as of right now, this entire area just continues to be submerged underwater. Police are trying to keep some of these people safe by blocking off some of the exits, make sure cars aren't able to go through these areas, stall out, get people hurt. All in all, just severe weather, El Paso weather. Everybody says uh, it changes all the time, and I'd say that's pretty accurate. Reporting in central El Paso, Bill Malugin, KFOX 14, News at 5. We kept those reporters busy today. Parts of southern New Mexico are hit hard by this morning's rain as well. This is North Desert Boulevard near the Anthony exit at about 4.30 in the morning. You can see one of three arroyos in that area that was flowing since the rain began and how much water was going through it. Happening overnight, a woman heading south on Diana near Railroad tries to make a U-turn but that portion of Diana is split down the middle by a diversion channel. According to friends of the driver, she thought she was turning onto a bridge. Well, instead, the front of her car fell over the edge of the channel and got stuck in the mud. She, however, was not hurt. 
70 families in Juarez have to evacuate when a reservoir in southeast Juarez overflows. KFOX 14's media partner, the El Paso Times, reports members of the Mexican military helped the residents evacuate. Juarez authorities say the families were provided with food and mats at a shelter set up inside a fire station in the Anapra neighborhood. You can count on KFOX 14 to keep you up to date on any severe weather, including advisories, watches, or warnings issued for the borderland, along with any road closures. And on KFOXTV.com, you can check out our interactive radar and live weather cameras. You can also find updates on our Facebook and Twitter pages. And with the rain comes the threat of West Nile virus. The El Paso Department of Public Health confirms its seventh case this season. The new cases include four women ranging from ages 48 to 70. This time last year, there were 18 confirmed cases in El Paso. Health authorities want to remind you to take precautions against mosquitoes, which can carry the virus. We have provided a link with information about the symptoms and prevention of West Nile at kfoxtv.com. Our weather's bad, but it's even worse up in Colorado, where heavy rains have caused death and devastation. We'll show you a dramatic rescue that was caught on camera. Debris blocking more than just roads, the danger it poses for West Side homes. Russian leader Vladimir Putin shows off his editorial skills, what he has to say about a possible U.S. military strike against Syria in a New York Times op-ed column he wrote. And the discussion between a local senator and Mexico's ambassador about the Rio Grande. Next on KFOX 14, News at 5, coverage you can count on. storms may move in quick. The KFOX 14 Severe Weather Team responds even faster. The best with minute-by-minute minute updates. Flash flood warning in effect. Borderland is just getting pounded this morning. More coverage of the hardest hit areas. A massive sinkhole has already opened up over here. Complete coverage you can count on.